Dan Cohan here, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to maximize cash flow from your rental property. Special thanks to Rent Ready Rental Management Software for partnering with me on this video. You need an awesome rental management software, link in the description below. Let's get right into the video. The first and probably the most obvious way to increase the cash flow of your rental properties is going to be to raise rents. You gotta, you know, maybe possibly be careful about that. Use your best judgment. It's good to do it when your like tenants are turning over things like that. But that is probably the quickest way to increase the income of the property, not really doing much. Now, of course, your property may be limited. It might be at the top of what it can, what the property can get on the market. You have to find a tenant, that sort of thing. Now, in terms of other ways to actually increase the income of the property without increasing rents, and what we'll do is we'll actually talk about increasing income, and then on the flip side actually reducing your expenses to then raise your cash flow by cutting your expenses. The other thing you can do is if your tenant has pets, you can actually charge a non-refundable pet fee on the front end of their tenancy and then also charge pet rent. For example, I charge my tenants a $4.95 pet fee. Again, this is not a deposit, it is a pet fee for having a pet. Depending on the size of the dog either or how many pets or they have, I charge them either $25 or $50 a month in additional pet rent. Okay, so if they have pets, this is a great way to get more income out of the property. A lot of landlords maybe don't even charge pet rent or they don't charge enough pet rent. And you know, they can damage your property when not properly taken care of. And so this will increase the cash flow of your property, but also mitigate your risk of uh, damages related to pets. And people are more than willing to pay pet rent and pet fees as almost virtually all places have them and people love their animals like crazy and will spend exorbitant amounts of money on them. Now, another clever thing you can do to increase the cash flow of your properties is actually, and this is really clever, I saw this on another rental listing, is rent out appliances. And it makes sense, especially on if you have like maybe lower end rentals where your tenants may not have a lot of money sitting around to invest in things like refrigerators and uh, washers and dryers and things that don't necessarily come with your unit by default, you can actually rent those appliances to them and treat it just like you would uh, any other type of asset. For $500, you buy that appliance and then you could rent it out you know, for $25 a month, for example, and now that appliance is gonna make you $300 in that first year and you know, you're gonna have that thing paid off within probably a year and a half and then it's just making you an extra $25 a month. Probably the most significant thing on this list in terms of increasing income for your rental properties would be to actually convert the property into an Airbnb. Now, this is a little bit different than traditional rental real estate. And if you still wanna maintain the same kind of passive, semi-passive type of income structure, the best way to do this would be to hire a some kind of uh, Airbnb hosting specialist or, or what they can do is basically sublet your property and they can, uh, there's different people do different things. Sometimes they just charge you a you know, flat monthly fee to, to run the service for you. Sometimes they will rent it from you at a higher rate and then do it, um, but it just depends. You have to work it out with a good, reputable uh, Airbnb host, but there's a multitude of them out there. Probably the first thing you could do is actually see if you could go get a new quote for insurance and potentially get cheaper insurance on your property. Now, I wouldn't try to sacrifice coverage. You always wanna make sure your properties are fully insured to where if you suffered you know, a total loss or something like that, um, you're not gonna be in the hole. You know, don't underinsure your properties, but you know, for example, I got this house in uh, July and the insurance policy that I was originally quoted for the house and that I went with when I bought the house was uh, $1,860 a year. And it was a good price, right? And, but then now, you know, just a few months later, I actually got hit with an ad and just was like, you know, why not? I'll just get, re get it requoted and see if I can save any money. And surprisingly, I'm saving now $860 a year just for switching insurance policy. So that substantially, and all that money goes straight to the bottom line. So guys, I hope you found all those tips great. If you would, if you guys need an awesome rental management software, please check out my partner where this video, Rent Ready Rental Management Software. I use it myself and use the code in the description to get 20% off your subscription. Guys, if you liked the video, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, comment down below if you have any more suggestions, and I will see you in the next chapter.